Hello. In this video, I will be talking about a new control which has been added to uh, ISO 27001 for 2022, which has been released last year. So there was uh, there, there is a control 8.22 uh, web filtering. So I'll be talking about web filtering, how to implement, what are the important things to remember, and if you are an auditor, what to audit in uh, web filtering in web filtering control. Uh, so today, if you see uh, the user spend uh, more time, increasing time on web on websites, different types of websites, applications. Uh, uh, they they serve for their favorite websites. Uh, they click on email links, uh, or they are utilizing different types of uh, uh, applications, web based applications, SaaS applications, for both uh, personal use also and business use also. Now this web activity uh, actually uh, exposes the organizations to a variety of uh, security threats to a range of security and business risks. Possible data loss can, ha uh, can happen. Uh, there are a lot, lot other things which can happen in your network, in your business. So here comes the uh, web filtering in picture. So it is, it is something uh, which stops the users from, uh, from viewing the uh, certain uh, URLs, certain websites by preventing uh, the browsers from loading those pages on uh, on on your machine on the company assets of specific sites. So web filtering is an important component of any any organization's uh, cyber security strategy, cyber security posture. Malicious web uh, web content can be used to uh, can be used to deliver uh, the different different types of malware, or it can be used to steal the user credentials or it can be used uh, to uh, steal some sensitive information. So web filtering, actually, uh, you can consider this as a solution to help to uh, to uh, mitigate uh, different types of threats by managing uh, the sites, the visibility of the sites, what user can visit, what user can view in your network. So that means if you want to control access to specific web websites, if you want to control access to specific content, you need a web filter. There is a generic assumption, or I can say a misconception that uh, the web filtering means firewall. Uh, basically, web filters and firewalls are different and they serve different purposes. The web filter uh, you consider as uh, it can block the access to specific types of uh, web content, whereas firewall uh, can prevent your network from, from exposing the internal services and computers and assets to external threats. So that's the basic difference between web filter and a firewall. A web filter uh, is not, you cannot consider a web filter as a direct replacement for a firewall. Each tool has its own unique use cases. Each tool has its unique, uh, its its own uh, positives and negatives. Uh, but for effective security, uh, a multi-layered approach, which includes both firewall as well as web filter as an application, web filtering applications, uh, that can be ideal if you have a multi-layered approach for that. So uh, web filtering looks pretty simple. Uh, you can consider I have to create some rules, I have to block some sites and everything, but as uh, just like all other technical things, as you start to learn more about web filtering, everything becomes more complex. So uh, uh, actually with, with a more than a billion active websites on the internet, there are uh, more, uh, multiple act active websites on the internet. There is no way that uh, every, every website you can include or exclude using some web filtering option. So you have to have uh, uh, some kind of approach where continuously you have to keep uh, revolving around uh, 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 your web filtering options. Now there are different types of web filters and there are different types of uh, firewalls at different different layers. Uh, I'll not go into the technical details of layer wise uh, firewall protections and everything, but uh, basically as, as implementer of, uh, 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 of the IT controls or as a team member of the IT team or as an auditor, you have to be aware of three basic uh, uh, three basic types of uh, web filters, uh, uh, rather uh, filters. So first is uh, you consider packet filtering. So packet filtering firewalls generally operates at layer three, which is a network layer. Uh, these packet filters uh, will inspect the data, uh, the data packets, 
uh, to filter the traffic based on the IP address because at layer three, uh, uh, we can uh, we can filter the traffic based on the IP address or the network port, both. Now, firewalls can also operate on uh, layer four, which is the transport layer. Uh, now, in this uh, in this uh, uh, layer four uh, firewall, uh, you can you can consider they will filter the network traffic based on the protocols such as uh, we have a TCP, which is the transmission control protocol. So likewise, protocol-based filtering can be done at layer four. Web filters specifically, or you can consider web application uh, firewalls. These operate at layer seven, which is the application layer. So this is the layer where uh, specific websites can be uh, uniquely identified using their URL or using their domain name. And these are designed to uh, protect the networks and the web applications from the application-based security flaws. Now you can consider something as SQL injections and other thing. So uh, kind of SQL injection kind of flaws, you can try to protect uh, in this application layer web filters. So yes, as a first step, uh, you have to implement the firewall. You have to implement multiple rules. You have to implement multiple policies using the firewall. But also, you should consider implementing web filtering applications. A web filtering service can work in variety of ways. Now, one of the ways by which uh, web filtering solutions can be differentiated by, uh, by how they define the acceptable content is by using different, different types of listings. So for example, we can uh, define some allow listing, we can define some block listing, we can do it based on the content uh, based filtering. So allow lists or allow listing, these are designed to uh, specify the sites uh, that uh, maybe a user, a computer, an application, a department is, uh, is allowed to visit, is permitted to visit. All web traffic is compared uh, to this allow list and any request with a destination which is not part of this allow list, which is not included in this list will be dropped. So this provides very uh, strict control over the sites which can be visited. Second is block listing. So block lists are the exact opposite of allow list. Instead of specifying uh, the sites that a user can visit, uh, we can create a list of sites which a user should not visit. So with a block list, all traffic is uh, inspected at uh, and, and, and any traffic to a destination which is on the list of the a uh, block list will be dropped. Now, this approach is commonly used uh, to, to protect against uh, known bad locations, known uh, bad uh, websites, uh, some phishing sites, or if you have, uh, if you are aware of some sites where some malware downloads are happening, some inappropriate content is there. So there you can have a block listing uh, uh, methodology. Third is uh, you can uh, do a content-based filtering. So. Uh, uh, content and keyword filtering makes a uh, decision whether to allow or uh, to block the traffic based on the content, based on the keywords, based on the uh, information on the web page. So for example, uh, any organization may have filters in place to, to block uh, the, uh, the specific uh, websites containing some explicit content, okay, some specific keywords, uh, uh, something like pornography and everything. So we can uh, block those websites because some content, some keywords, some words are available, are present on those web pages, on those websites. So when a request is made, the content of the site is inspected and the site is blocked if the policy is violated. So this, this filtering approach uh, uh, enables the organization to block the malicious sites, in a, inappropriate sites that uh, the organization don't want to visit. So uh, this is how you can consider implementing web filtering in your organization. Uh, but now if you are auditing this control, web, filter, uh, web filtering control, uh, then a few things need to be checked. Uh, you have to consider a few important questions. Uh, you have to consider a few important records. So you have to check like, uh, uh, has, the, uh, has the organization identified the types of websites? to which the employee should or should not have the access. So is that identification done or not? How do you keep a check uh, on the websites that have uh, some information upload function, unless it is permitted for valid business reasons, 
but how do you keep a check on these kind of websites? Then uh, you can consider uh, what controls the organization uh, has established uh, about like what rules are defined for safe and appropriate use of online resources, some online websites. Uh, you can also consider how different rules are monitored. You, have, you may have uh, created multiple rules, multiple policies, but then you have to check the validity when the rule is allowed to be used, when the rule has to be uh, has to be deleted and everything. So review has to be done. Okay, so how different rules are monitored, reviewed, how the rules are kept up to date. Okay, then is it is it covered during the information security training about the uh, safe and appropriate use of online resources, uh, including access to the web, what to do, what not to do, do's and don'ts. And uh, the, the training should also include the organization rules, uh, the contact point, uh, for for raising any security concern if there is any in terms of uh, access to the websites uh, any any uh, exception process uh, like uh, when restricted web, uh, uh, websites or web resources web content need to be accessed for some business reason legitimate business reasons then what is the uh, process uh, how to uh, how to contact and whom to contact how to raise the request for that then do, do do the organizations have any practice of uh, sharing uh, some regular security updates? Uh, do the organizations share the regular browser advisory notices? So generally, if you try to uh, open something in the browser, some browser advisory notices come in front of you where you have to decide the action what to do next. Uh, finally, uh, 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 how all this is linked with the organization's threat intelligence procedure. So because... Uh, as the new standard uh, suggests, uh, the organizations are required to create some kind of threat intelligence platform. So how all these uh, inputs, how all this information is linked with threat intelligence specifically. Okay. So as, as uh, uh, the web filtering provides important input to the threat intelligence and also uh, receives very important action points from the threat intelligence. Okay. So uh, this is how what you can... Uh, uh, what you can consider uh, while doing the while conducting the audit for web filtering so i have shared all important aspect of the web filtering activity from both implementation point of view and auditing point of view uh, and i think this information will be helpful for you